guest today from HNA Life. Uh, it's a very interesting company. Here's Cooper, the founder and CEO. Welcome, Cooper. And to give everyone a quick um, kind of summary, uh, HNA Lab is connecting LiDAR and other data collection technologies to precisely measure and create 3D models for manufacturing, whether it's plant movement, working plants in process, or building entire operation. It's cutting edge technology provides more accurate real time 3D modeling for a manufacturer's business strategy. And then it combines that with artificial intelligence, 3D technology, and real time twin insights uh, to kind of optimize uh, warehouse and manufacturing uh, opportunity. Um, I don't know if it's a complicated subject. Let me know if, if you would add anything to that, Cooper. Well, as simply as I could say it, we capture, visualize, and optimize real-time big data for manufacturing plants, manufacturers and um, decision makers that want to and have to handle all of the active real-time environments that typically a manufacturing plant operates. Super interesting. And, you know, this is kind of, everyone is getting excited about I guess why AI has become such a hot topic lately is, I guess, a consumer product, but they don't realize that, you know, if you look, you know, a little bit under the hood, the applications of AI are endless, right? And I think the yes. wider industry uh, is much, much deeper. Exactly. So you're obviously more of an industrial approach to it. So I'd love to hear a bit more about how did you come up with the company? Why did you fo focus on manufacturing IoT AI? What was the combination that led you down this route? Yeah, it's been a journey so far. Um, so I've always been super techy, a big nerd over here. So um, I worked on a lot of data mining software architecture for um, GIS. If you're familiar with GIS, core information um, systems, geospatial. Um, what we're trying to do is create software that you can see absolutely everything going on in the entire United States. Um, that creates big data for global economic indicators for the industry itself. So we were able to process and architect a software that was able to visualize all of these great economic indicators um, happening all across the map. But what we specifically wanted more was real-time data. How can we make a system that not only can sense all of these cool specific movements or um, things happening, but try to get it down from not even a county all the way down to the uh, building. So what we did is dove into a lot of R&D for LiDAR and um, finally configured a way to then annotate and utilize computer vision for smaller areas other than counties and such. Um, that turned into a real estate project um, so we we're trying to get every single property specifically in um, a community to then be able to see the assets and then the particular unique uh, aspects of the area. What that did was bring a lot of insight for manufacturers saying, wow, if you guys could um, annotate all of these particular things and properties, what could you do in something like a manufacturing plant? Well, we had the computer vision, we had everything set. It's been such a big issue. The manufacturing industry has been co considered the dinosaurs of our economy. So um, it's such a it's such a hard thing to to manage as these buildings are so big. So um, what we did was did some pilots, and uh, we had some great feedback, and everyone's just been super happy that AI is now officially in our lives i know I, that's it's exciting and then obviously there's all the fear mongering scary bits that people like to advertise as well so i'd love to dive a little into that because you know ai has this ethics and uh, philosophy side to it and its applications and its impact yeah. and the way we mix it with human beings right from everything i've learned is really the mix of human and machine that's going to make the perfect combination it's like the masters of the machine to then architect the software and the AI to make it the most efficient. So you need your masters manually to be able to then have the AI efficiently do everything else for you. So that's what I want to talk about a bit is like, you know, so what are some of the ways that the AI is impacting the workforce today in manufacturing? How do you guys impact the workforce, you know, experience as a, as a you know, in, in their day? 
you know, how do you see this, this, how, how do you see the impact of your technology changing that? Yeah. So there's just so imagine sitting at your desk and you need to be on your walkie talkie and ask how many parts are in which room um, doing what and how the status is. Um, what we're trying to do is make it so the managers can just essentially ask our cloud solution, Hey, where, where are the parts in um, section four? And then it will provide you the answer without even um, communicating with any other managers. So being able to first thing, see everything all at once, where they are, the location, you can then use AI to basically essentially monitor and track everything that you need. But um, AI is also very important for our industry 3.0, as you're aware, to get the data specifically to then know exactly that that AI tool is going to be the most effective for the job and task, which is place. That's incredibly cool. It sounds almost like having a little sidekick that helps you yeah, out. Know exactly. Work there. And this is manufacturing. That's why it's also very cool. I hadn't seen an application in more of an industrial way because everyone's always thinking high tech or, or you know, self-driving cars and AI doing the self-driving. But that's so cool that because I'm the the amount of efficiency, cost cutting. So so let's let's dive into that. What are the simple advantages that the product provides, not just to the worker, but to the company itself that's using and leveraging it? Yeah. Right? What is what are some of the benefits? Oh. So here we go, Cooper. Are you back? Uh, we can't hear you at the moment. Can you check your mute? Hello, Cooper. I hear you at the moment. Sorry, everyone. Working on the technical issues to see if we can. Oh, can okay, you hear me? Can... Yeah, we can hear you now. Technical difficulties, everyone. <laughs> um, so where were we at? So I was asking you, so what are the benefits of a company using your AI into the manufacturing? Just to keep it super simple, I wanna give okay. in simple terms, why would why would a company want to use AI? So why would a company wanna use AI to save time? To save time on these tasks, as, if, as the tip of the iceberg, you could say, but particularly in manufacturing, there's so much material labor percentages that they modify but AI can actually allow them to go up and down rather than just rely strictly on material labor, um, how many workers you have to do the specific tasks. AI can actually just eliminate that. Another, the most important feature is safety. Um, fires, heat sensitivity, noise, typically that's all done and um, not done in real time. So having something that can see if there's any safety issues to then be able to identify them and alert the person, the professional that needs to do something about it. Why hasn't that been done um, before, you know? So it's just such a, it's so comforting that we now have AI safety um, that we can integrate in, into all of these various business um, systems, you could say. But another one would be material waste. So AI specifically can track how much is getting cut off and how much needs to be used for a product in general. Um, what then AI can do is provide simulations and um, more understandings on exactly how to make it better. Why do you need this amount of material and how much are you actually wasting out of what you're bringing in? Um, a lot of manufacturing plants, they waste millions of dollars just by ordering too much or too little of the materials uh, and at the same time, though, you can have AI, which h and Live does, track and actually understand how much you need any time of the year 
instead of planning it ahead to the point where you're almost guessing. So AI is just eliminating the guesswork by architecting all of these uh, wizards of their crafts so then they can do less to then do more innovation and creativity to make their whole entire workforce actually love being there. So all of these jobs that they don't like, we can actually have AI solve them, fix them. So these decision makers, um, higher up uh, execs and everything else can get into the more critical um, issues of the corporation. And it sounds like the future is here. That's incredible. So if, if we were to summarize it, you know, optimization, cost and time saving, uh, as well as safety increasing and, and predictive analytics. So you're basically not wasting resources either, right? So basically costs go down, productivity and profits go up essentially. Right? Yeah. And then safety but premiums go down too. I mean, it sounds pretty fantastic. And my next question would be, okay, so it's obviously the future is here. AI is here. The people and the talent that, you know, masters these skills and how to be the masters of the AI are going to be in a better position to, to get the best jobs. Right. So, you know, what are some of the skills that you look for at your own company to work in this space? Absolutely. So creativity, innovation, um, the high performance, uh, means taking attention to details. Uh, but the biggest thing here is just growth wanting to be part of a team that is innovative enough to continue to provide cutting edge technology. Um, it just all comes down to being part of something that's very special and enjoying that you would like to be there. But it all revolves around trying to bridge the gap between data science and innovative creative applications that can help everything in the middle solve anything they'd like technology is beautiful it's just you have to be quite creative to architect these particular solutions that many um think that it's not even a solution or able to create a solution for so the biggest thing here is wanting to be part of the end goal which is optimizing the manufacturing industry of ours uh, as well as wanting to continuously innovate with the corporation with the team and creatively it, utilize your creativity to make something better than it already is. Well, guys, there you have it. Some of the things and aptitudes that you should be looking for and, and honing in if you want to work in the exciting space of artificial intelligence. And some of the things that, you know, as I was saying, there's some fear mongering and there's always certain subjects with AI that when I talk to people that are actually in this space are able to explain very clearly of what, you know, one of them is job erosion, right? A lot of people have this fear that they're going to displace the jobs. I believe that they're just going to make them better, right? But, yes. you know, what would you say to that, the whole displacement of jobs and, and reducing the mind for certain types of work? What do you, would you say to that? How could businesses and workers prepare uh, for that potential disruption if it is even a concern? Yeah, so just be a problem solver. That's the biggest thing. You have to some you have to be able to wander and then pick out these issues that need to be solved and understand that everything's changing always. If you're stuck into what you're doing and your methods before, especially in tech, if you're not up to date with these new technology advancements, it's just somewhat a hard industry to stick with. So in order to uh, defy all of these um, displacements and such, I'd say just to always continuously be creative, innovative, seek these problems to be solved and stay up to date with technology. We're getting all these great things. The coolest part is we can use these tech, this technology to then create more technology, better technology. It's more of an enhancement feature that we're now in rather than um, an issue for development. This is, uh, we're licking our chops right now because we have all of this technology about to be um, into the market. It's such a, it's such so beautiful, but you just need to learn how to use it to then create something better and more efficient with your time and for your customers. I completely agree. It's definitely more of a productivity and, and performance enhancement tool for people than really a job erosion concern. And so that's why 
instead of people being worried about the jobs that it's going to take out, they should be actually preparing themselves for those jobs, right? So reskilling and yeah, upskilling. Be excited for them. And so, what do you have any resources you could say to the audience that you find, uh, you know, online or elsewhere where they could start learning about the subject of AI and, and maybe learning some of the skills? Well, I'd like to say if anyone would like to talk to me about it, um, just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to talk about tech, AI, and anything. You can also look at our website, um, but it entirely depends on the style, um, the style that you'd like to learn with. I'd say YouTube. Um, there's everything out there, even Chat GTP, anything like that. Use AI to then learn and enhance further. When it comes to resources, yeah, just um, shoot me a message on LinkedIn, connect with me, and I am happy to help and uh, specifically lead anyone based on what they're doing or what they're looking for um, to better resources. And, you know, as, as we're coming to an end, I also want to ask you, this is clearly a use case that you've come up with within your company, right, that you guys have focused in on, on efficiency in manufacturing, but... What are some of the other use cases that you've explored for your technology in particular? So we've also architected a real estate solution. Um, think about it as buildings are they large. There's a lot of moving parts into um, manufacturing, but our real estate cloud solution is in fact just a scaled up version of um, what we provide for manufacturers, but just different variables. So AI can be involved in within any, um, a lot of industries as well as we're getting refreshing for safety and health uh, features, the health industry, but specifically a lot of our expertise to me is um, lying within we have manufacturing and then soon to be the real estate industry. Sorry, everyone, and sorry about the performance and the tech issues. I think we're probably going to have him right back. Sorry, everyone. Let's see if we can fix this. Hello, Cooper. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you're back. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You lost me again, eh? Yeah, unfortunately. I think, sorry, Cooper, the connection's not great. And so everyone, I, I think uh, we're going to call it a day just based on, you know, I would want to submit everyone to, to the to the pattern in it. So everyone have a great week and uh, we'll be here for the next live stream. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you very much for coming.